Golfers, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to talk about five life-changing bunker tips that you can explore and implement within your practice that's going to help you transform your bunker plate and also lower your scores. The second part of this video showcases a simple indoor drill that you can use within your practice to understand compression and what we need to do in order to create compression on the backswing and how that translates into the downswing. Tune into this video to improve your golf swing. If you struggle with your bunker play, this is a quick setup guide that's going to give you a little bit more of an identity when you're in a bunker shot. Too many golfers spend too long in these bunkers, but sometimes they don't have a vision. There's no goal in mind. So the biggest thing we're going to educate you to start off with is just having a brief setup guide that you can adhere to and give you a little bit more clarity as to what you're doing. So one of the biggest issues I do see on a regular basis is ball position. A lot of golfers will get the ball position too far back in their stance too far off the back foot, the hands get too far ahead. So I've got 54 degrees of loft here, I've got 14 degrees of bounce on this wedge. The reason why I've got a little bit more bounce, sand is quite soft, I want the club to glide underneath the golf ball, I don't want the club to dig. So ball position is one issue, ball position gets too far back, hands get too far ahead, so grip in the club gets too far ahead of the club head, we take loft off the club, but this 14 degrees of bounce has reduced into about zero, and then you'll get shots with the club just digs so as you can see from there the club just digs and the club loses all its momentum so the first thing you need to understand is where is the ball position and how are we going to add loft second issue i see is the club face gets relatively close so if you think about the position of your left wrist if you think about where the knuckles go down towards the ground in my left hand so the knuckles of the left hand go straight down towards the ground that orientates the face to a slightly closed position so this would be square with the toe of the club's facing the sky we see a lot of golfers who get the grooves fixated and straight down towards the ground. We close the club face, so that 54 degrees of loft. The ball launch is quite low and the club generally digs the contact points higher in the face. So the ball will come out quite low, but we don't generate a lot of control. Work the club back, we don't want to close the club face. A great drill to educate you, sand on the club face. If I close the club face, that sand's going to fall off in conjunction with my right foot. So if I close the club face where the grooves go down towards the ground, the sand falls off relatively close to my right heel. So step one, what we're going to do is we're going to build a stabler base and give us the best chance possible of making a really good shot. Instead of having the ball too far back in your stance, you're going to get the ball a little bit more in the middle of the stance, if not slightly left of centre. That's going to help us create a little bit more shallower angle attack coming in impact. It's going to allow the, the club to glide underneath the golf ball, create a cushion to sand and propel the ball out. So step one, is standing a little bit wider than what you normally would, get the ball position a little bit further forward. Step two is understanding where your weight needs to be in conjunction with your feet. So we wanna feel like my left hip and left knee are over the middle of my left foot. So left hip's a little bit lower at address. Position just left to center, a great feeling is try and get your left hip, left knee over the middle of your left foot. That's gonna allow your weight to sit into your left foot. Then what we're gonna do from there, a great drill that you can establish is as you work the club back, we don't want the sand to fall off just after our right heel. We want to feel like we're going to place the sand on the club face again. We want to open up that club face. So how do we create that? We want to feel like as we work the club back, the knuckles of my left hand go, don't go straight down towards the ground. I want to feel like the knuckles of my left hand are going to face back towards my body line. So the knuckles of my left hand are going to face back towards the middle of my sternum. Angle should decrease. I want to feel like the knuckles point back towards the middle of my body line. That's going to allow the club face to open. And you can see there the grooves of the club now, instead of facing the ground, they're a little bit more up towards the sky. And that cupping of the left wrist is going to increase the loft and it's also going to increase the bounce. We're going to cup that left wrist, knuckles are pointing back towards your body line. That angle should feel like it reduces slightly. Instead of knuckles towards the ground, knuckles towards your body line. That's going to open up the club face. Then as we come through impact, we want to feel like as we release the club, the grip end of the club points back towards your right hip. As we release the club through impact, grip end of the club pointing back towards the right hip. That's going to allow us to release the club head through the golf ball. It's going to allow the club head to release the hands on the way through. Place the sand on the club face as you swing the club back. You're going to try and throw the sand over your right shoulder. Throw the sand over your right shoulder. That's a good indication that the club face is nice and open. And as we release the club, we're going to feel from here, my chest rotates towards the target and the grip end of the club is going to work up and left through impact. So chest to rotate towards the target, grip end of the club works up and left. You get the ball a little bit further forward, weight onto your front foot. We're going to hinge the club up, feel that club face opens up nice and quickly. Knuckles at your left hand pointing back to the middle of your body, so that angle is going to decrease the knuckles of your left hand to point back towards the wrist angle. Then as we release the club through impact, 
we're not driving the grip low and left. I want you to feel like through impact, the grip end of the club works up and left. So as we release the club, grip end of the club is going to point back towards your right hip. So grip end of the club point back towards your right hip. That's going to allow the, the club head to release. And it's also going to feel like the grip end of the club slows down, which is going to help us maintain the loft on the club face, but also increase the bounce. As we release the club, grip end of the club to work up and left around your left hip and your chest is going to face the target. Keep that club face nice and open where the heel is slightly higher than the toe. The heel higher than the toe grooves towards the sky. It's going to keep that club face nice and open. It's going to prove your bunker play. So as we release the club, keep the sand on the club face. That's a great feeling to keep the heel higher than the toe. High shot but soft landing as it hits the green. So grip in the club to point back towards right hip. Release that right palm towards the sky on the way through. The biggest things we hear on a daily basis is the club face is king. The club face is the broad one. So if you're struggling with a flip through impact, I want you to visualise what the club face is doing in the back. So when you start the club face in an open position, how are you going to square that club face up? Any time that we open the club face, we're going to have to release the club really early. Grip end of the club goes back the way. We're going to close the club face. So if you're turning a seven iron into a nine iron, the face could be a little bit open in the backswing. So the first thing you need to address is the position of the club face. In the spectrum where the club face gets really shut down, if the club face goes back in a closed position, if we get into impact and we don't create shaft lean that everyone wants to achieve, so far left you're going to be hitting a provisional off every single tee. With the club face being closed in the backswing, the more I lean the handle forward, twist the handle forward into the right, that's going to allow that club face to square up. Identify how you create more compression. You're not getting the club face open in the backswing, then you release the club early, causes ground contact before the golf ball. We had lots of loft. More compression, you need to get the club face a little bit more square to close on the way back. Because if the club face is slightly more close coming into impact, to square that up, we're going to add the lean the shaft forward and think about how the club face position affects the impact conditions that you want to achieve.